All right, I'm gonna do a live uh, a story time with you guys. I thought I'd tell you a little story, and uh, for I wait a couple seconds to see if anybody else pops on and and uh, get started here in a moment. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love hearing people's personal stories and uh, kind of get to know them a little bit better. And I thought I would take uh, some time this morning and tell you some personal stories uh, from my childhood, from my uh, teen years, and uh, yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit. So yeah, whoever just joined up, it's good to see you and good to have you on. I'm not picturing who it is yet, so hello. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Just figured I'd take some time to see who all pops on. Yeah, let me see if I can take a look and see who does come on here. So well, good to see you guys. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a moment. It's nice to have you guys pop on the feed and uh, hear uh, uh, some stories. You know, I like to tell some personal stories every once in a while. And Oh, hey, how you guys doing? It looks like we got uh, Jacqueline and uh, we got Lisa. Good to see you. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are getting used to preaching to a camera too. That's definitely different on our end. Uh, we we do it, but we enjoy it. But Jacqueline, I hope you're doing well. So, well, God bless you guys. Thanks for joining me. And uh, let me uh, go ahead and get started. And that way people can watch it after we're done here live as well. But um, So I wanted to tell you a story. Um, when I was a kid, one thing that people don't necessarily realize about me, but in high school, I was a gearhead. I definitely uh, loved uh, muscle cars and I loved working on cars. Uh, I owned a 65 Mustang and uh, I definitely like to uh, hot rod it around town and do things that are probably not appropriate and uh, to you know, roast my tires and stuff like that. And I uh, definitely uh, enjoyed having it. And, uh, my dad is actually the one who taught me how to work on cars, and I remember multiple times going, Dad, I don't know how to do this, and he'd shout there and show me, and I'm like, why can't you just do it? And he's like, no, you can do it, and I'll show you how to do it. And uh, so he taught me how to work on cars. Now, I'm going to give you a story here, and uh, <laughs> he swears he did not do this on purpose, but I'm still not sure because I know his sense of humor. So um, he uh, wanted me to test to see because my uh, engine wasn't starting. So we wanted to test to see if it was getting what's called spark. You know, that's the uh, spark, uh, you know, plugs where they um, actually spark and that ignites the gas, which of course is a combustion engine makes a turn. So anyway, so what you do is you just take the uh, spark plug wire and you put it next to the block and just a little tiny bit away and you can see if it sparks. You can physically see there's a spark there. Well, I was 16. How was I supposed to know that? And uh, so he tells me here, hold the spark wire while I go uh, turn the ignition. And uh, so I hold on to it and he cranks the ignition. And let me tell you, that hurt. That thing shocked me. I'm like, ah! And I yell, <laughs> I scream, and, and I go, Dad, what are you doing? That hurt. And he's like, why didn't you put it against the block? And I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know anything. And uh, he laughed and laughed and laughed. Now, I know his sense of humor. I'm thinking he put that coil on me just because he thought it would be hilarious. Uh, but he swears to this day he didn't do it on purpose. But let me tell you, that hurt. That was a strong shock. And uh, But anyways, I, I was a gearhead. I loved working on my uh, Mustang and uh, I loved making it uh, you know, into a hot rod and uh, just doing some uh, neat stuff with it. Um, you know, I, I remember making some bad decisions with that Mustang. I had a um, 289 in it originally. It was a smaller V8. And uh, if you know anything about the Mustangs, they, uh, the biggest engine you could buy in them was a 289 uh, V8. And uh, it just didn't have enough pep for, you know, a hot rod that I wanted. So I decided to buy a 351. And uh, so I put a 351 cubic inch engine into it, which was the biggest small block that Ford made because you couldn't put a big block into a 65 without altering it big time. So I put a 351 in it and uh, to give it, you know, some more horsepower. So I put this uh, 351 in there. And uh, anyways, I... Uh, do not advise this. Important safety tip. Don't do this. Learn from my mistakes. Um, there was a long stretch down by Desert Hot Springs, um, by Palm Springs, and um, it was going from Yucca Valley to Palm Springs, a long straight stretch. And I thought, man, I've got a lot of power. 
I want to see what it can do. So my teenage adolescent brain thought it was a good idea to push the pedal all the way to the floor and let's just see what happens. So needless to say, I was going way faster than any teenager ever should drive. Don't do this. And um, I also uh, was um, just cruising along and uh, the car actually was going so fast that it sounded like it was going to explode. I'm sitting there driving. <laughs> if you've ever been in a 65 Mustang, they are not known for their shocks and smooth ride. And this, this car is just and and uh, I got there really fast. And um, anyways, when I finally get there, the engine starts spittering and sputtering. And it, uh, it sounded like it was gonna explode. <laughs> it was not a good thing. And um, needless to say, that little decision that I make that I thought it would be fun to push that gas to the floor cost me an engine. I spun the rod and she is a knocking and had no power and I had to get her towed home to Yucca Valley and yeah, I blew up the engine. It did not survive. So that little decision, uh, that little bad decision cost me a whole engine. So I actually had to get the engine rebuilt. I did uh, most of the work myself, but as far as the machine work, um, I did take it in and had them uh, do all the machine work for me and do that. And of course, you put a you know upgraded cam in it and you make it sound better and you all do these other things. And anyways, when I got it back, man, it was fun. It was uh, that 351 was rebuilt. It was strong. It was uh, fast, man. I could uh, go through tires faster than I probably should have. And uh, anyway, so that one little mistake, though. That one little bad decision cost me a lot of money. It cost me pretty much every penny that I earned during high school went into that stupid car. Um, that Mustang, actually, my dad still has that Mustang to this day. And one of these days, I'll probably buy it back from him. But uh, for now, I have three kids and I'm just, yeah, no. Uh, but anyways, um, I, I think back and how many times in our lives do bad decisions cost us? Do little decisions in the moment, do these small decisions cost us big? I want to read a scripture that we, uh, our, our church goes through a uh, um, daily devotions where the whole church is reading together. That way we can kind of keep on track together. And uh, that way people have questions they could ask and say, hey, today's reading, it didn't make sense. What was that about? And, you know, so we, we all, as a church, we read to, uh, our devotions together. And uh, today's, uh, or not today's, last, a uh, little over a week ago's uh, devotion is actually found in Numbers 13, verse 30. And this was a uh, small decision that cost them big. And uh, I'm going to read it to you real quick. This is found in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. And it says this, But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Let me give you a little context here. The nation of Israel was just coming out of Egypt, and they were going to the promised land. They were going to try to take over the promised land. So they sent spies into the land to see what the land was like. And they came back and you know, it's flowing with milk and honey. It's great land. It's awesome. Caleb comes back and goes, let's do it. Let's take it. Let's go in there and, and get the promised land. It's going to be awesome. And let's, let's see what happens in verse 31 now. Then the men who had gone up with him had said, we are not able to go against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw are um, of great height. And there are there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim. And we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers. And we also seemed to them. So here, Caleb, he comes back. He's like, let's do it. Let's take the land. We can take them out. But the other spies that uh, went with him, 
gave the people a bad report. Gave the people a report that, you know, um, basically said, we're tiny, they're huge, these guys are monsters. They eat their inhabitants, they're gonna destroy us, they're gonna eat us, ah! <laughs> you know, um, and they gave the Israelites a bad report. And in doing so, the Israelites made a decision to not go into the land and possess the promised land. Because of this one bad decision, the Israelites had to wander in the desert for 40 years. It's amazing in our life how one little bad decision can cost us big. And that's kind of my thought for today is to let you know, don't make little decisions you know, uh, that are bad. You, know, you might not think they're a big deal at the time. But in the long run, boy, they can sure cost you. Just like that Mustang, you know, growing up, uh, putting the pedal to the metal. Man, I'm going to go. I'm going to see how fast it can go. And boy, I was going fast. And that one little decision cost me thousands. And how many times does one little decision cost us so much? And how many times after we make that decision, we go, man, I wish I didn't do that. I wish I didn't, you know, uh, put the pedal to the metal. I wish I didn't do something else because that little decision cost us so much. You know, the Israelites, that's what they were thinking. You know, man, we can't go in this land. They're huge. They're giants. They're the sons of the Nephilim. They're from Anak. Oh my goodness. We can't do it. We're like grasshoppers. They're going to eat us. They're going to destroy us. Yeah. Caleb, he had the right idea. It's like God's for us. Why are we spazzing out? Why are you guys all afraid? Man, who cares? They're giants. whoop de doo We have the God who spoke the universe into existence. The God who, by his own wisdom, put the foundations of the universe in place. The God who is so all-powerful, all-knowing. He is just awesome. Why in the world are we spazzing out about a bunch of giants? You know, Caleb had it right. He's like, let's make a good decision. Let's do what God tells us to do. Let's not worry about these other things. You know, the Bible tells us to not lean on our own understandings, but in all our ways, acknowledge him. You know, we all make mistakes. You know, I mean, as a teenager, I made mistakes. I mean, I was, did a lot of dumb things and, uh, you know, blowing up my engines, just one of them. Uh, maybe next time I'll tell you about how long it took me to go through a brand new set of tires. Yeah, that cost me money too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes in life it costs us money. Sometimes bad decisions cost us relationships. Sometimes bad decisions um, can cost our lives, you know. And uh, so these small decisions, make sure that you use wisdom. That you, uh, you know, these small decisions don't cost you big. So... Anyways, man, I see a lot of people coming on. So, uh, hey, my sister's on. Hey, sis, how you doing? It's good to see you guys. Uh, I see Violet Graves just came on here a little bit ago. and Good to see you. I see you. Hey, Bailey, I haven't seen you forever, bud. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. And uh, Pastor Mike, I just saw you earlier. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. Uh, Sean, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Awesome. Olivia, how you doing? Good to see you. Pastor Chase. Uh, Maria, how you doing? Good to see you guys. Give everybody a hug for me. I miss you guys. Pastor Matt, how you doing? James, good to see you, buddy. Billy, good to see you. All right. Jamie, good to see you. And June and Todd and Dodie. Lots of you guys are on. Wonderful. Well, anyways, it's good to see you guys. I Hope you enjoyed the story. If you came in a little bit later, you're gonna to have to uh, watch the video in the beginning and kind of get the whole context of the story. And it has to do with lots of wisdom and, and uh, yeah, not having it when you're a teenager. So, uh, <laughs> so anyways, um, some good stories. So uh, hopefully you guys got a little bit out of this devotion today and uh, sure miss seeing you guys in person. Uh, hopefully you guys are staying safe and, uh, and staying sane, you know. Um, my wife showed me a meme of a husband and wife sitting next to each other and the wife's just looking at her husband like she's going to rip his head off. And, and the wife uh, says, you're breathing too loud. That's how tense it can get if you're in the house too long. 
<laughs> so anyways, love you guys. I hope you guys are all doing well. Well, this has been my little uh, thoughts for the day and our devotion from um, a little over a week ago. And just thought I'd tell you some stories uh, about me being a gearhead in, in high school in my 65 Mustang. And boy, I thought it was hot stuff back then, man. I used to race around town thinking I got a fast car and oh, it's going to be great. Whoa. So you guys who are gearheads, you will definitely understand that. So and if you're not, just pretend you'll be fine. So anyways, God bless you guys. Love you guys. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe out there, and we'll talk to you next time. God bless.